You're all set. Please go ahead. Okay, I'm going to uh, call the Town Services Outreach Committee of the Town Council to order on November 7, 2024 um, at uh, 10 a.m. And uh, we have four members of the committee here. And uh, I we know that Councillor Ryan might be um, a few minutes late, but he said he will be here and that we should go ahead and start. So um, with that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and just recognize that this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to have access can do so via Zoom or telephone. Um, this is a uh, virtual meeting, so no in-person attendance. Members of the public is available and members of the committee are not at a um, single site anyway. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that everybody who's on the committee in this present now can hear me and uh, we can hear them. So I'll start with uh, Bob Hegner. Present. Uh, Councilor Lord. Get to unmute so we can just make sure you, we hear you. Can you uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Jennifer. I'm here. I apologize for being late. I clicked on the CRC meeting link, which I got a notice <laughs> of this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. Um, so with that said, um, the uh, first uh, order of business is uh, when under our normal procedure is to see if there's anybody who wishes to make public comment. So if anybody yeah, who's in, uh, in attendance would like to make public comment, please raise your hand so we can bring you into the room. Uh, Chris Lindstrom uh, was first, so Chris. Good morning. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, sorry guys, I'm in um, a class right now and I was I would love to be able to stay for this meeting in its entirety, but I um, at least wanted to show up and make a quick comment. Um, I am on the Transportation Advisory Committee and care a lot about um, the state of walking and cycling in town and um, have been promoting the Safe Routes to School program on behalf of MassDOT um, locally for the past couple of years. And I wanted to um, just be totally supportive of the proposal um, before the council right now to create a school zone around the high school as well as the middle school. And I wanted to just address some of the concerns around creating a zone for the middle school in particular, um, even though there are some sort of basic uh, kind of rules for motorists that would be slowing speeds down, um, there's a 25 mile per hour zone already. There's a four way stop sign at the um, intersection of the driveway to Arms and Chestnut and High. Um, just we're dealing with children. Um, we're dealing with larger children but um, children are commuting to arms in the morning and leaving from school and they are sometimes impulsive and rash and they need some additional protections. Um, and for that reason, I just wanted to be 100% um, supportive of the idea that arms needs a school safety zone. So our children who are commuting on foot and bike can make childish mistakes sometimes when they're walking down the street or, you know, staring at their phone and tripping off the curb, mm -hmm. um, that they're able to do that in the morning and in the evening and, and not, um, you know, experience any severe negative consequences as a result of that behavior. So I just wanted to make sure you guys heard that from me. Um, and uh, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. One thing I will say before we uh, I bring Tracy in so that uh, both of you can hear, 
there is maps that have been drawn by um, DPW staff, Jason Skeels, for both the middle school and the high school. They are in the packet for today's meeting so that um, if you um, want to take a quick look at the packet and look at the maps and you have any particular comments about um, the proposal as it's drawn, um, that I just wanted to alert you to that. Uh, could you bring Tracy in now and uh, Tracy's Adrian? A point of order, Andy, uh, George has joined us. Can yeah, we... thank you. Good point. George, I'm going to confirm that uh, you're hearing us and we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I can. Okay, good. Tracy, good morning. Hey, good morning. Um, I assume you can hear me. Um, so I just wanted to follow up on uh, Chris Lindstrom's comments. Um, I did see, Andy, as you mentioned, that there was a me the memos added to today's packet about support saying that the DPW supports the creation of the school zones for the middle school and the high school. Um, I have not yet reviewed the maps. You know, I'm happy to share them with TAC and see if there's any comments. I think they were just added to the packet late yesterday because I didn't see them before now. Um, but I am I'm I'm really appreciative that the DPW acted so fast on this and that Jason has prepared both this memo and the maps showing the details of where the school zones would be. Um, and and uh, TAC does support the creation of school zones for both the middle school and the high school. Um, you know, there was a comment at the last TSO meeting about how there's a four-way stop ready at the middle school at the main entrance, um, which is the entrance also for the road that goes behind the high school. Um, even so, I think it's really, it's really good to create the climate around traffic safety with our schools and to promote safe routes to school, um, to have a school zone in both locations. Um, and just like we see people speeding on Triangle Street, um, which is 25 miles per hour, and then there's also the one 30 mile per hour section, we also see, I mean, I don't live in that neighborhood, but I've heard that we also see people speeding on High Street and Chestnut Street. And um, that route is sometimes used by commuters going to UMass. Um, you know, trying to avoid going through downtown. So it happens on a lot of our streets and I th and I would, I hope that the council will support the DPW's recommendation. So thank you. Um, and unfortunately I can't stay for the meeting either because I have another meeting. I have a standing work meeting that's at 10. I'm just gonna be a little bit late for that. I did have a comment on a few other items um, and I would, I'm unfortunately, I, I wish I could stay for the meeting and comment further, but these are just going to be my few brief remarks. So um, the roundabout at Amity and University Drive is on today's agenda. It's great that the Amherst has already received a grant for that. Um, that has been a roundabout at that location has been talked about for years. The plans were drawn up years ago, but there was no funding to pursue them. And it's excellent. That there is funding there. TAC is very supportive of that. Um, our few comments, as I noted in my memo, were just related to bicyclists and vulnerable road users and trying to make the roundabout as safe for them as possible. I mean, I do hear uh, the Disability Access Advisory Committee's concerns about access for visually impaired people. Um, we have some intersect, some of the roundabouts in town, like a triangle, are not good for visually impaired people. I feel like Pomeroy roundabout is a huge improvement over what we ha have at Triangle. So I'm hoping that that can be a model that we also use at Amity and University Drive. Um, a few other comments, um, Southeast Street, I really appreciate that TSO is willing to have a combined meeting with TAC and the Disability Access Advisory Committee Commission um, on Southeast Street. You know, there are, I mean, we share some related concerns and it would be great to get all that information out there about the analysis was done and what the potential plans might look like. Um, and I will say too, that one thing that keeps coming up in our TAC meetings is just concerns about speeding. And TAC members have mentioned that it seems that more people are speeding now. I'm not sure if that's true or that's just anecdotally. And so um, I know that TAC is really interested in looking more at speeding and speed management, um, including you know what are the impacts now that the town has adopted chapter 19, 17C and also has created the safety zone um, up on Henry Street. And, 
you know, what does that mean for enforcement? What does that mean for signage? Like, I think that even I'm a little bit confused about what all the ramifications are and how that can be enforced. I mean, I think it's great that Amherst is taking these steps. And I also will note that um, in a recent state DOT report um, on speed management strategies, like Amherst was cited a number of times as having great speed management efforts and making a real difference in reducing speeds on certain corridors, including along College Street and 116 near Amherst College. So um, I do hope that we can eventually have a uh, combined meeting with TSO and TAC and the Disability Access Advisory Committee related to just on speed. Maybe it could even be a forum in case people have questions because there have been a lot of changes and it would be to get that information. Um, and I'll also just say, so one thing on the commission, I know that this is coming up on your agenda every meeting, which is excellent. Um, so, I mean, yesterday, just anecdotally, so I was walking with a friend after work, and you know, now it gets dark at 4.30, but she was mentioning she lives off of Triangle Street, right, right on Triangle Street, actually, um, on one of the side roads, and she was noting how fast cars are on Triangle Street sometimes. And she said that she's spoken to the police about it and the police were very supportive. And, you know, as somebody who's on TAC and who comes to TSO meetings and it was like, well, so what happens with those, what happens when people make those kind of comments or have concerns? And it's great that she talked to the police and it's great that the police were responsive, but I really do see that the role of a transportation commission is to make sure that those conversations don't just happen with the police and go back, but what are the steps forward? Like, can we make sure that the DPW is aware of it and the planning department and all the decision makers that could help change it? And to me, that's really a major, major reason to have the Transportation and Parking Commission to get all those staff and decision makers in a room together and make recommendations to change things and not just get a sympathetic ear when you call the police or the DPW or the town manager or whoever, or counselors, right? To move it forward so that we can make things better. So um, thank you very much. And I'm sorry, I can't stay, but I will watch the recording. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. So I, we have no more public comments, so we can move on to um, town manager appointments. And I think that the town manager has one uh, appointment, Paul. I think Paul is. He's on a phone the, call, I think. Yeah, I think so too. So I'm going to, um, I guess, come back to that, um, to, to the town manager appointment so that we can uh, continue to move along. Um, Ms. Guilford is here and can talk about it too. Um, the. Uh, I had a communication from Paul right after the grant was issued that he wanted us to take that um, proposal that we had put aside until there was funding available and to put it on to um, a higher um, priority for getting it um, back to the uh, council, which is why it got back on the agenda so quickly for today's meeting. And uh, Guilford, if you're there, could you, do you have any projection as to when you would like to see work start on the, um, uh, on it if it's, if it's approved and uh, give us a sense of timeline? I'm sorry, I think we may have missed that, Andy Ames. Yeah, and I thought Guilford was. Uh, um, we'll go backwards. Uh, you had a you had a town manager appointment one to yes propose. yes. Why yes. don't you take care of that, and then we'll go back to the traffic circle at uh, Amity and University. Okay. Yeah, this is the cultural council, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, this is we have one vacancy on the uh, cultural council. Uh, this is Do Kim. Uh, Do Kim is a uh, a parent and um, has been an organizer for um, the the Korean community in Amherst and has previously been involved with the Korean community in Brookline as well. 
Um, he's really interested in broadening the cultural council's reach and um, to a, to a, a broader to all members of the community. Um, he's um, been in, involved as on the board of the Amherst Hockey Association, um, and so he got sort of recruited into this, and we're really excited that he put his name forward. So is there anybody from the committee who has any questions? Uh, Councilor Ryan. I'm prepared to make a motion, so I will wait until um, others have spoken. Does anyone else have any questions about uh, the proposal for the appointment? Uh, so I'll go back to you uh, for the motion. So I move that uh, TSO recommend to the town council that it approve the appointment of Doe Kim to a two-year term to expire June 30, 2026 on the Cultural Council. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think George. Bob spoke. can second. <laughs> Bob, Bob uh, uh, was the first one to speak, so we'll put Bob down as the seconder. And uh, there, let's just go ahead and uh, proceed with the vote, starting with uh, Bob Hagner. Aye. Council Lord. Aye. Councilor Ryan. Aye. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. And I mean, <laughs> so it's unanimous. Uh, what I was saying uh, when you were uh, not able to hear, uh, Paul, was that uh, after the grant was received, you asked that TSO, uh, which had put aside the original proposal when it was referred to us uh, in the spring until it was funding available, that move it forward. And the question that I had started to ask uh, and, uh, and uh, didn't get a response to because we got distracted uh, was uh, if you could give us any indication or Guilford could give us any indication of when work would begin and uh, what the timeline might be for um, how, how quickly a decision be made by the council so we can work backwards from that. We haven't got the contracts yet from, we haven't got the contracts from the state yet. So we do not have a firm timeline. I'm assuming we're going to need to start construction sometime next year, either the late summer or early fall. Um, so I do not, I can't give you a firm Firm number yet or firm date because until we get that contract and sign it, there won't be a firm date. We'd like to get started as soon as possible. We we do need to acquire some property from one of the one of the property owners, and they've agreed to do that, but we still have to go through that process. Um, and then we have to get the the contractor does uh, not the contractor, the consultant does need to finish up the plans. And get them ready for bidding, um, which is a little more intensive than when the town of Amherst engineering staff does it. Okay, well, that's that's helpful information. Um, Jennifer? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, so how, well, two questions. How long is the period of construction? And I mean, you don't need to hear this from me, but it to start it as the students are coming back to school, I mean, how do we... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so how long will it be under construction? That is a really critical intersection. It's, it'll be under construction for a while. And yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, we just have to kind of figure out which are the important days not to have construction, like move out days, move in days, um, special. Um, we, we've, uh, we definitely don't do holidays. The state doesn't like to do holidays and we try to mirror the state um, so we don't let people work on the Friday before a holiday. Um, so we would just work with that. And then UMass has events and we would just work around their events. It's, but yeah. Oh, well, so that's good to know. So it's not going to be ripped up where you can't, you know, it's just out of commission for, and there's no, 
No, it'll be ripped up and you'll be slow going through it, but it won't be ripped up and you can't drive through it. Thank you. Other questions, Bob? Yeah, I just have a question about the the cost. I mean, will the will the state grant fully cover the cost, or uh, is it the state going to pay? You know, irrespective of the the bids. No, the the, the number <laughs> the state gives us is the number the state gives us, and we adjust as we need to to make everything work. Yeah, but you're you're you will adjust plans to fit within whatever money we get. Is that correct? Two point. We, we adjust as best we can to make it fit. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Just wanted to um, pick up on two things that were in the TAC memo on this topic, um, which Governor may already have seen. I don't know, but I just wanted to raise them. Um, we get, I think, generally very good help and advice from TAC on these sorts of issues. And they were supportive of this 100%, but they had two requests. And um, one of them has to do uh, with a sign related to a uh, bike safety, uh, basically a, a bike graphic uh, may use the full lane um, sign. And uh, to make it clear that, that in the roundabout, a bicycle has every right to be uh, in the center uh, of the traffic uh, going through a roundabout. And so I guess my question is, is that something that is possible? I don't see it on this plan that you've given us, Guilford. It may be there, and I just don't recognize it. Um, but that's a request they made. Does that seem reasonable to you, and can it be accommodated? Yes, it's reasonable. We we did it on the Pomeroy ones. It yeah. wasn't in the original uh, plans, but we, we went ahead and added it. It will be part of this one as well. It just wasn't shown originally. Good. Um, and the other request, I think, was more just that the DAC be consulted um, uh, with this. Uh, I think there could, I think uh, Pomeroy is sort of a model, and uh, I'm not sure to what degree um, this roundabout will will mimic or imitate what's happening or what happened at Pomeroy. Um, but there, the second request was that the TAC be or DAC, excuse me, the Disability Access uh, Commission be uh, um, consulted. And. and we we actually modified Pomeroy to meet the BACC's recommendations there. Um, their biggest concern is that round uh, not roundabouts crosswalk should be in line. Don't go off in one direction and have to readjust in the island and come back the other way. So to do that, we just have to pull the crosswalks back from the intersection a little more, and that's what we did at Pomeroy, and that's we'll have that done here as well. And what you'll see is if you look at the picture at the Mm -hmm. layout of the roundabout now they, they kind of make a v the crosswalks they come in mm -hmm. at a v in the middle right so you're just going to flatten that v out to where it's straight across thank you, you have to just pull it back to up the road a little bit mm -hmm. yeah uh, before calling it jennifer i just have a couple of uh, announcements to say one is that um, i did uh send the chair of taca um, memo um, saying that we were um, they had been asked to move forward with this recommendation and uh, uh, make a decision as to whether we're recommending it to the council. And it asked uh, for um, any comments from the committee. I have not heard back. I also told her that um, we would. Uh, I didn't expect an answer for today, but that if she could respond by the December 14th meeting next week, um, that that would be very helpful. Uh, the second thing I did is that I put in the packet the <clears throat> TSO recommendation regarding the Pomeroy um, project that addressed these issues. Excuse me, Jennifer? Yeah, so I, is that the primary difference between Triangle Street Roundabout and Pomeroy where the crosswalks are? And yes. could could Triangle Street at some point, you know, have the have that a correction? How how big a project is that to change the crosswalks at Triangle? 
it, it's it's a pretty big it's a pretty big project, but it could be done at some point when the roads are re repaved or realigned. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, one one challenge with that uh, triangle street uh, is that it's not an X in the in the traditional fashion where the two streets intersect at ninety degree angles, and that was a particular challenge that uh, Guilford had in designing that particular one and. Uh, Met the challenge, but it has it was still a challenge nonetheless. Uh, Council Ryan, sorry, Your hand is, okay. So, um, is there any reason that we need to have a further discussion today, or can we put it on the agenda again for next week? And I'll contact. Uh, Myra again to see if DAC has any comments that they would like to make, even though I think that uh, you know their their major concern, I think, is just continues across all intersections. And one of the things that may come up is uh, you know, I think one of their recommendations is to have crossing signals that have uh, sound to them because of uh, side impairment reasons. And I don't know if that's possible or not and or anticipated. So I guess that would be one question that we would need to come back to. Those those are standard now. So when you buy a set of RRFBs, they come standard with the ability to produce a sound. It's... Yeah. Uh, Paul? Yeah. So no. I, yeah. I think that's just standard operating procedure now. The um, if the counselors have questions about the roundabout that you have, if you could send them to us in advance before your next meeting, that would be helpful so we can prepare answers for them. Um, or if you have any concerns, um, so that yeah, you know, we would like to move this forward uh, so that when we get the paperwork done, we can get the con the uh, consultants working. Yeah. Anything else for members of the committee today, because this will be on the agenda again next week. And I will be contacting DAAC once again. Bob. Yeah, uh, the, the the comment from the uh, DAAC was, or from uh, what, what we heard earlier was uh, that the um, the split, uh, what are they called? The, the split dividers or whatever um, should be wide enough so at the crosswalk so that people with disabilities can pause in the middle of crossing the street. They may not be able to go get across very quickly. Uh, it would, would moving them further from the, um, from the, 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 the circle, uh, prevent that from happening. I don't, I, I don't know what the trade-offs are in, in this area. Um, it's still, we, we still have to give that amount of space in there. It does, it does make some issues, but usually we can work it out. Okay. Hey, anything else? Okay, so hearing no discussion, no, seeing no indication that others wish to uh, talk further uh, on this, um, I think we should probably move to school zones and uh, been hearing quite a bit about it, and um, uh, Guilford, I want to thank you and thank Jason for working so quickly to give us um, uh, a plan to work with, and uh, it is uh, in the packet, and hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at it. Um, shall we start by talking about the high school? That's fine. Do you want to show the drawing? Um, I'm I'm pulling it up now. Andy, if you would you yeah, like to go ahead. I think that's a good idea. I had I had two questions about it and about others. Um, there we go. 
What are the uh, gray bars that are across it, the it, two points and towards each end? What do they signify? That actually signifies really where the school zone starts. And that's the measurement that Jason did to get the, the area in there. So that's all that is. It actually doesn't mean anything um, other than the school zone is in that area. And of course, this is for approval of the school zone, so it doesn't uh, necessarily specify where crosswalks are. Uh, no, it does not. I mean, there's only one, there's a crosswalk at, tr actually, the only crosswalk is a triangle at the at the upper left of the drawing. There are, it's a, cro a crosswalk across um, Mattoon Street but not across Triangle Street at this at this lower the lower end the left left lower end. There is one, isn't there? Uh, at the other end, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Your Prey Street or whatever it is. There at Prey Street, there is a as a crosswalk with RFBs there. And that's the uh, one that's close. That's the one that's closest to the traffic circle. Yes. The roundabout. The roundabout. Yeah. Um, other questions from members of the committee about the map and the proposal? I have one more, but I'll get to others. Jennifer. So is the reason on the map, there's a little green circle. I, I'm looking, um, what would it be, south of, of Newell Court. Now that that's that not green, part of this. That little green circle is right, where right. the signs will be. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bob? Yeah, I had a, question, a couple of questions. One is, I, I believe there is a crosswalk just just close to the the, the Amherst Women's Club, um, just a little bit further uh, to the mm -hmm. north of this. There is, uh, yeah. And to the south, would it, yeah. Uh, would it make sense to move the the school zone sign to before that crosswalk, or is it immaterial? That was the first question I had. The second question is uh, where Taylor comes in to Mattoon. Do we need any kind of um, signal there as well, or is that not really used much uh, in the way of traffic going, you know, through that intersection? Um, we we chose not to do do move to Taylor and put us extend the zone to Taylor Street. It just kind of made it difficult because if you do Taylor Street, then you should probably go up the side and do the entrance that comes out to Gray. Mm -hmm. Um, and those just seem to be less traveled, the bigger traffic and the faster traffic is on triangle. Mm -hmm. Um, I would not move the crosswalk at the, that's actually at Lussie street. We have, uh, rapid rectangular flash and beacons there as well. Um, I, I wasn't suggesting moving the, the, the crosswalk. I was suggesting moving the, the beginning of the, the sign, the speed limit 20 sign so that it gets on the other side of that crosswalk. Right, that will, I wouldn't, we wouldn't recommend moving it there because it's a little too, you start getting too far away from the school actually, the entrance to the school. Okay. And then you start getting too much, too many signs and too many flashing lights all in the same spot. Um, the recommendation is, is that these would be flashing light signs. So mm -hmm. flash, yeah. we kind of spread them out. There is a crosswalk at Kellogg Ave that comes in in between the two in the middle of the right. school zone. Right. It crosses there as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this gets to my question, then, Gilbert. Uh, at Fort River, we have several places where we have placed signs that says school zone ahead, which is sort of a middle ground of letting people know that it's coming, but it's not in force at that point. Would it be advisable to put a school zone ahead sign uh, 
along Triangle Street in the direction of the uh, women's club? Um, so the school zone ahead sign is not a required sign. If you place these, um, it's recommended that you do it. Um, we kind of concerned about the sign clutter and the clutter. It's only a short distance from Main Street up up this hill, and we're kind of a little concerned it might be too many too much signage in there. Um, but we haven't really ruled it out, and it's not something that has to be approved. To set the zone it's something that can and cannot it can or cannot be put in just so it's not mandatory yeah i think that the reason that i thought about it is is that uh people coming up from main street you have it's a curve so you don't um have this as much sight distance ahead when you're coming from uh the roundabout uh uh, pleasant, it, it you, you'll see it faster. You, you'll see a little bit more distance. Um, so I, that 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 was the reason that I was bringing this up. Other questions, thoughts? Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Is something. Again, I, what I hear uh, Guilford saying is we can always add the sign. But it yes. doesn't have to be, yeah. So I think that's something we should see how it goes because I, I agree with you, Andy. You don't know what you're coming to. If you're not familiar with it and you turn um, onto Triangle Street from Main Street, if you're not familiar with the area, you wouldn't know that there's a school, that you're coming up to a school. So maybe an earlier sign could be helpful. Now, anything else? I'm going to do one other unusual thing, and that is that I noticed that uh, we have an additional um, attendee present and we while we did public comment it's somebody who's familiar with uh school issues so that if uh the person who's the attendee wishes to make public comment still uh they should uh, that individual should raise hand and uh bring uh bring them into the room otherwise we'll continue on and uh sing no request. Um, I'm going to ask Athena to switch what's on the screen now to another document that I provided earlier to her that um, I was not able to add to the packet because I literally did it um, within an hour of this meeting. Uh, but could you put up the word document with the motion question on it? So what you'll see, and uh, I don't know if you can make it a little, um, on the first section, what I did was that I took the uh, motion that the select board used at this point in the process when we established the school zone for the Fort River School, and it was exactly the same thing that uh, Jason Skills uh, developed a plan that was quite similar in appearance um, to the plan that you just looked at for the high school. And uh, this was this was the motion that was actually proposed to the uh, to the select board. I took that language and modified it is what seemed to be appropriate with the second. Um, the rules of procedure of the town council say that if a committee recommends a motion, that it should provide motion language. And uh, so that uh, I wanted to at least uh, uh, be able to start with something if we're going to go in that direction. So I did that for both 
the middle school and the high school. Uh, and of course, we don't have, you'll, you'll notice in the uh, Fort River one, that there's a lot of um, four advance warning signs and specificity about four advance warning signs. <laughs> warning signs, we have not, um, don't have drawings that include advanced warning signs. I just omitted that section of it. That's why it's um, these are a lot shorter. But um, if we're going to uh, recommend, make a recommendation today, we needed motion language. And that's uh, what I put forward. I also uh, want to conclude this by noting that in Athena can uh, confirm this uh, is, or explain the process, but the committee would propose um, language, but uh, the council president can modify the language before presenting to the council so that it isn't that this is necessarily the final language that would end up in the council packet if it's recommended by this committee, but it's a, it's a starting point. Councilor Ryan. First of all, Andy, thank you very much for doing this um, so that uh, we can, in fact, move ahead. Um, I don't have any questions about the language here. Um, I'm willing to um, make a motion when appropriate, but uh, we have two other hands up, so let me take my hand down for the moment. But again, thank you for doing this, and I hope that we can um, move ahead today and recommend that the council uh, I'll make these motions and adopt them. Okay. Bob, is it okay if I ask Guilford first? Sure. Guilford, do you have a comment? I just wanted to say that we didn't put times in, in the school zone because we haven't heard back from the school superintendent on what times they thought would be the best. So if people are looking for times in the motion, uh, I don't have anything to recommend right now because we haven't got that feedback. Yeah, and of course, the uh, Fort River didn't have anything no. in the, the motion that the select board passed regarding times. Mm -hmm. uh, because that the times or whatever the, the flat, you know, this was the installation of the flashing beacons and establishment of the zone, not the times. Paul? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, I was going to say, it's not, it's, I don't know if it should be part of the motion. The only other thing I just want to note is that the regional high school, I'm not sure if you did this purposely, it's an official address is on Mattoon Street, um, although we're talking about Triangle Street. So I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Well, the reason that I did it is because the uh, zone would be on Triangle Street. Yeah, okay. Um, so... I mean, if you had, do you think it should be say Mattoon Street the the way it is worded? Um, I I just want to make that was that was, it was intentional. I, the the address of the high school is twenty one Mattoon, um, but but the signs are on Triangle Street. So if that's what that references as to where the signs are, then I think you're fine. Okay, Bob. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, note that in the first sentence of the middle school, we should say we put middle school, not high school in there. All right. Just a oversight. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, I, if I, I'd say if 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 uh, times of flashing and um, and uh, warning or, you know, warning signs are something that we want included, we could put them in this just in, in a general sense, you know, uh, you know, to, to, you know, as determined by the school committee and, or the, the superintendent of schools and, uh, and the DPW, you know, something like that. We don't, I don't, I don't think we should hold this up over that. Um, because I think there, there's plenty of, of, um, ways in which we can modify this without needing to go back to the council. Uh, 
we could leave it now and just suggest the members of the committee go up Triangle Street from Maine once and take a look at the amount of signage there and decide whether it would be helpful uh, because we can come back to it as a later issue. I don't think that the installation of the signs is a particularly difficult task if we come to it later, but we don't have to rush that decision would be my guess. But uh, Councilor Ryan? I think we're on the same page here, but my thought is, um, thank Bob for catching that, that the language is fine as it stands. Changes can be made later. I guess I'm just wondering what would the process be for time? Because I'm sure that's going to come up at council. People are going to say, well, what what's the time uh, that this is going to be the case? And the answer to that would be, well, we're waiting to hear back from, and maybe by that point we will have heard, um, but... Um, that's a decision that basically, I mean, how does that work? Um, the, the superintendent or someone says, here are the times that we like, or they don't respond at all. And um, Guilford just makes his, his makes a judgment call. How, how does that work? Paul? Yeah, I think you want to have the, have the school be able to change it. They've changed their start times, for instance. Um, and you don't want to have to come back to the council to change the timing of the of the um, of the signs, I think it you know at the discretion of the superintendent and in uh, in consultation with the town manager and, and the superintendent of public works or something like that. So that doesn't need to be an emotion. I think that in other words, there's there's a process here that 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 you all follow. And, yeah, yeah it's, you know, I don't think don't it's need... ever been. Yeah, I don't think it's ever been in a motion. So right, exactly. So that doesn't yeah. be appropriate, right? We just trust the process. There's a good one, and you'll work it out. Okay. I mean, I think that's the discussion that we had way back when. It's been a few years, obviously. But when we did the uh, Fort River one, uh, it, my recollection was is that we made a deliberate decision not to put times on and just leave that as a decision that would be made by town manager of the uh, uh, in consultation with the superintendent and the principal of the school. It was, and the Ford River process was driven largely by the uh, principal of the Ford River School at that time. Councilor Ryan, back to you. So with that having been said, I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay. Then and, make a motion. Well, my motion would be that uh, TSO recommends to the town council that they adopt the following motions. One, to establish a school zone um, for the Amherst Regional High School uh, on Triangle Street. And secondly, to establish a school zone at the Amherst Regional Middle, Middle School on Chestnut Street. And um, we, the, we, we were only discussing the high school at this point. Ah, we're just doing the high school, okay. Yeah. Well, my motion uh, would just be to the language of uh, the high school. Now, do you want the uh, full motion as written on the screen? Do you want me to read it out? Sure. Um, so we're recommending that the council adopt um, the following uh, motion to establish a school zone at the Amherst Regional High School on Triangle Street. Move to establish a school zone for the Amherst Regional High School with two 20 mile per hour school zone signs installed, one on the north side of Triangle Street for southwest bound traffic, and one on the south side of Triangle Street for northeast bound traffic with school zone pavement markings in accordance with the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the Massachusetts Amendments to this manual. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, the motion has been made by Councilor Ryan seconded by Bob Hegner, and it is the motion that is in the middle of the page that you're looking at. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, let's proceed to a vote. And uh, we'll start with uh, Bob Hegner. Aye. Councilor Lord. Aye. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Aye. 
Jennifer Tab? Yes. No, it'll be yes. So it's five zero. Um, so I think that what we want to do next is uh, switch to the map of the middle school and uh, see if there's any discussion about the middle school proposal. And uh, I did ask, um, just so you're aware, I did. Tracy a few days ago about the question of um, tax uh, position on this recommendation, given the fact that there's a four-way stop at the entrance. Um, I think we had a response during public comment and I don't need to say anything more. Is there anything um, that people want to raise or ask about this um, proposal? I don't see any requests. So, do we see where the signs, uh, where, where the flashing beacons would go on the sign? We see the, uh, just giving an end of the, uh, I assume the beginning and end of the um, zone is where the uh, flashing beacons are. There's nothing equivalent to the black stripes that were on the high school uh, no. map. The, the black stripes were just Jason's measuring. They, they shouldn't have he should have taken them off. They're just left on. Okay, so that's insignificant. So if there's no questions about it, then I think we should, um, okay, and I'm sorry to switch back to the uh, motion language and uh, see what uh, the committee's will is regarding a motion. Else? So Andy, I'm prepared to make a motion. Um, in line with what we've just done, that TSO recommend to the council they establish a school zone at the Amherst Regional Middle School on Chestnut Street with the following language, move to establish a school zone for the Amherst Regional Middle, Middle School with two 20 mile per hour school zone signs installed, one on the south side of Chestnut Street for westbound traffic, and one on the east side of High Street for northbound traffic, with school zone pavement markings in accordance with the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the Massachusetts Amendments to this manual. Second. Okay, this motion made and seconded. Uh, Bob? Yeah, I just had a couple of um, corrections, I think. Are, do we need to say Chestnut Street and High Street um, in the title? Um, and I th isn't the one on the south side of Chestnut Street for eastbound traffic, if I look at the the um, compass on the uh, the the one on the Chestnut Street is for eastbound traffic and right yes. yeah the motion says westbound so we should change that to east. I consider that a friendly amendment. And uh, change the uh, chestnut and high street. Yeah, yeah. Up above it, where it says established schools on Amherst Regional Middle School, chestnut and high streets. That's it. Thanks. Got to get rid of the T there, Andy. Oh, our uh, uh, whoever's uh, typing. So I, it's high street, not height. I, <laughs> it's all right. Thank you for catching that, Bob. I can't read maps. So uh, <laughs> I can't either. Yeah, yeah my many yeah, things yeah. I can't do. That's another one. And I drafted this uh, before I had a cup of coffee. So that's all right. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you for drafting it, and it's fine. And uh, 
So uh, yeah, with those friendly amendments counselor. in language, yeah. And uh, I think, Jennifer, you were the second or you're accepting the friendly amendments. I am. Okay, so shall we proceed to a vote? Uh, Bob Hegner? Aye. Councilor Lord? Aye. Uh, Councilor Ryan? Aye. Uh, Jennifer Cobb? Yes. And I'm a yes, so it's five to zero. So we have, uh, I think, taken care of uh, what we can do on agenda item six. And uh, I'll leave it to you. Uh, Athena, you'll uh, know what to do with taking care of the motions to from this point on. And I think we can go on to agenda item seven and see if uh and i think that i what i'm going to limit the the meeting to 11 45. i know that uh jennifer has to leave and um but is there something that you uh want to take up regarding continued discussion of the transportation parking commission for 45 minutes or Yes, Ryan. Go. Well, the next item uh, for discussion was the scope. And um, there is a document, unfortunately, it's not in the packet that I sent to everyone and um, and uh, that, that we should use to guide us in that discussion. Um, if it's appropriate to put that on the screen, um, we could proceed with that discussion. I know Paul was not here for the last uh, meeting, um, and I thought we had a very good initial discussion and talked to essentially about the need for this. Um, I can't imagine, given his busy schedule, he had a time to, uh, maybe he did, but I can't imagine he had time to actually sit down and, and go through, and listen to that discussion. But I thought it was a good one and a number of concerns were raised. Um, and then we were prepared to move on to the question of scope. Um, and this document basically just lays out the, the plan of action. Again, I don't know if Paul's had a chance to look at it, but essentially we talked about purpose in the initial discussion. Um, and then we were going to move to scope and the remaining topics. And one topic that needs to be added here at the very end is to actually, the last thing to do would be go through the language, the charge language in detail line by line. But, um, this is, this is the sort of plan that we agreed to. And the next step would be scope. Um, but unfortunately, that document that would guide us in that discussion is not in the packet. And I'm afraid I didn't catch that. So um, you all have been sent that, but I don't know really how we can proceed or if we should proceed. Um, I'd be happy to start that discussion, but I think we need to have that document in front of us. Um, do you have it on your computer? I do. Um, and I could try sending it to Athena and ask her to uh, put it up on the screen. Um, you could share it yourself if you have. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm someone who doesn't That's like okay. using Yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, send it over to me. And, <laughs> I can and explain I can why this won't work, but it's not of general interest. Um, it won't work, though, so I would have to send it to her. And if you can bear with me for a second, I will try to do that. Um, and uh okay well i while you're doing that let me uh do something uh different and move to agenda item nine which mm -hmm. is future meeting schedules and agendas and the reason that i want to do that is that uh we have been trying to schedule um the meeting which at the at last our last meeting we talked about making it a hybrid meeting so that um, people could participate in the meeting if they were unable to attend in person. And um, so because we recognize that um, members of TAC or DAC may have problems physically getting to a meeting in person. Uh, so we wanted to at least give that option. Uh, the um, thought 
um, wise after having had some discussion with some other uh, of people is to uh, do a try for December 5th or December 12th, which are days that we have set aside. We have not looked uh, for TSO meetings, but uh, we would need to consider pushing that back in time to accommodate the other two committees. Um, so what my recommendation, subject to, of course, um, the input, what, what you all decide, would be to ask Athena to send out a um, questionnaire to members of all three bodies asking about availability for times in, we had talked about late afternoon to early evening times, um, and uh, see what kind of response we get back to that. So we can go ahead and schedule something. So would the only agenda item for such a meeting, uh, Andy, be this? Yes, if we did this, it would be solely, um, and I think that it would take a fair amount of time. There were a lot of questions asked um, after the uh, first discussion, uh, it was in the packet for the last meeting, uh, Bob had taken the questions and reordered them so that they would be um, in an organized fashion by theme as opposed to by presenter. And uh, that would be able to allow us to an orderly discussion on each topic in which there were significant questions coming from council or one of the three committees because the um, document included the questions that were asked at the council meeting where there was the first presentation. So I think that would be the, uh, the plan and uh, the final approval of a date really needs to come then when Guilford can tell us whether he can get all of the people that he would like to be present for that meeting because he had talked about seeing if the consultant who worked with them would be available. Uh, Councilor Ryan. And I'm sorry, while you were speaking, I was doing on something else. Um, I think I remember correctly, but are we looking at two specific, did you say we're looking at two specific dates, December 5 and December 12? Yes. Those, to, go ahead. And the reason is that there are days in which we have meetings. Um, we need to check against other committees to make sure that we're not conflicting with other committees. And I don't have access to all of the committees to know that. Um, and the uh, other, the reason for Thursdays, in addition to it being our regular meeting date, we would just be moving our uh, meeting to a later time to accommodate it is um, because TAC meets on Thursdays. Athena? <coughs> I'm, sorry. I'm not sure about TAC and DAC, but Charter Review Committee meets the 12th and GOL meets the 5th of December. And the CPA committee meets both, but that may not be. I'm the liaison, so that's just may apply to me, but I, I could miss one meeting. Councilor Ryan. Yeah, that triggers my memory. Of course, the 5th, I would have a, a meeting at 630. So again, if, if we met at 5, I think that wouldn't be a problem. Um, and I, I shouldn't be the deciding factor, but that uh, thing is correct that on the 5th, there's a GOL meeting that um, starts at 6.30. But I, I'm, I have no problem with back, I mean, I don't love it, but I, I certainly can live with one back-to-back -back meeting. It's not gonna kill me, so. Andy, did you say the committee agreed that you wanted to do a hybrid meeting or is this gonna be remote? Um, I think we wanted to do hybrid. Um, Guilford had indicated that um, it would be very helpful to do, for as many participants as possible, an in-person meeting so that uh, 
as things were talked about, there was uh, more ability to show things and show changes that might be made. Um, and so we talked about doing an in-person meeting and then we ran into the question that DAC was concerned about whether it would be able to get uh, all of its members to be able to attend in person because of uh, some of its challenges. Uh, it's probably the committee that has uh, benefited the most from remote meetings. Mm -hmm. So that was why the hybrid discussion came up. And I think uh, Tracy uh, Zafian was at the last meeting when we discussed it and she was mm -hmm. supportive of this. Um, so I think the Charter Review Committee uses the town room at six o'clock on the twelfth. I think it is, Athena. So it's that's tentative. that would be a conflict. Yeah, okay. it's it's a tentative in person. I've saved those dates um, because they've talked about in person meetings, but they haven't decided which of their meetings they want to have in person. So it's a placeholder at the moment. Okay. And I may or may not know by then if they're going to actually use that space. When will they be making a decision and should we be considering another day of the week? There's um, their next meeting is the 14th. Typically, we give council priority of meeting space, so that's true. If you would like to use the space, we can make that room unavailable. So, when you said the 14th, it's November 14th that their next meeting is correct. Charter reviews meeting November 14th. It sounds like uh, members of the committee are available on the 5th and the 12th. And so now the question is what what the other two bodies, uh, if they can meet one of those or their dates. Um, so I think that's where we're at. Um, so I can pull for the 5th and the 12th. Um, I'm hearing 5 o'clock on the 5th would be better to accommodate the member who's on GOL. And then on the 12th, should we do... Uh, Five five thirty six six thirty. Any options? <clears throat> Anytime works for me. Yeah, they're all fine. I think TAC <laughs> traditionally has met at five thirty. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So why don't we why don't we aim for five thirty? And you're looking for a one hour meeting. Is that correct? It'd be nice. I don't <laughs> know uh, whether Guilford or uh, Paul have. Uh, any thoughts about time, having seen the questions that I came up that. about how much time should be allotted? Yeah, it's just helpful, helpful to know if I'm asking people if for their availability, if if we can tell them, ask them, give them an estimate of how long we're asking them to be available. <laughs> Do you have an answer, Paul, or do you want to take some I, time I, and get back I, to I it? I mean, I think, it's, I think 90 minutes would be optimistic and a, a good goal. I don't think yeah, I don't I don't think it'll get done in an hour. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And also if you do five thirty to seven or five to six thirty, that's a it still lets people have dinner afterwards if they depending it's not chew, chewing up the entire dinner time. So shall we say an hour and a half? Mm-hmm. Except for me and George, we'll have to eat during one of those meetings. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm I'm on fasting right now. So. <laughs> Permanent, because they have intermittent fasting and then they have permanent fasting. That's a big thing. <laughs> so I don't think we, uh, I think this is one where we don't need a motion, but uh, if there's agreement amongst the group, then uh, Athena can go ahead and send out the poll. Will do. Okay. George, uh, do, you have a, do you want to take up any? Uh, of the TPC discussion. Well, again, it's a really the sense of the committee. Um, I'm perfectly willing to start that discussion. If, if Athena can put it up on the screen, I'm also perfectly willing to delay it. I don't think Paul's seen this before. I sent him a copy as you well. Did. You did. Um, yeah. So that he has it and he also can see it on the screen. Um, <clears throat> I think the issue of scope is going to be a, a critical one at the very uh, end of the document. If you want to just scroll down for a moment, Athena, if you could, um, the very end of it, I list what I take to be what's left 
to the council if uh, this proposal goes through. And I'm not saying yay or nay here. I'm just uh, trying to be factual. And that may need to be corrected. I, I That's part of the point of this process is to find out what I may have missed or misconstrued. But if my understanding is if the proposal goes ahead, um, the council would retain acceptance of public ways. Um, the council would control any long-term use or alterations of the commons. And the council would retain control of replacement of flags and banners other than um, certain exceptions that are listed in the current uh, policy. And that would be it. Um, so um, it's a substantial amount of uh, uh, council responsibility that is being proposed to be transferred um, elsewhere. Um, and so I thought we could begin if we wish, or we could do it another time, working our way, if we go back to the top, working our way through this document to see um, what um, changes, what thoughts people have on the changes. Um, I think one particular topic is going to be uh, quite, uh, take up a lot of time, but I think we should work our way through it uh, item by item. So if we scroll up to the top of the document, um, we can start there. And that again, assuming that people want to do this now, it's now 11, 12. We have about 30 minutes if, we, if we're willing to start this process, but that's not, not, my, not my decision. Well, let, let's uh, follow your lead. Okay. So the way it's presented is the current use, is the use and then the current status, what currently is the case, and then what, uh, if this proposal goes forward, what change would result. Um, and the first uh, item is long-term parking requests, item 2B in the policy. Um, these are seasonal uses, not greater than 180 days, up to eight total parking spots used in conjunction with expanding cafe, food and drink, and other retail areas. Um, this currently is a town manager um, with monthly reports for all requests and approvals, reports I take it to the council. And the proposal here would be to shift this to TPC. Any thoughts on this? Any concerns, objections? It takes something off the town manager's plate. Um, I assume since he made the recommendation, he's perfectly happy with that. Do we have any concerns? I don't have any concerns with this particular use. Okay, All right. I don't either. No, I don't. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I think that the next one might be more significant discussion. So why don't we move to the second? Okay, the, the next one is 2D, permanent or other parking requests. Any permanent parking changes, modification of fees or other requests not detailed above in the policy, such as parking permit required, no parking signs, parking meter fines, et cetera. Currently, this lies with the town council which has the authority to review, take action, hold public hearings, and to refer to relevant committees or to the town manager. Under the proposal, this would go to the Transportation Parking Commission and with authority to review, take action, and hold public hearings on such requests. So this would move a permanent these kinds of permanent parking changes to the TPC and take it off the town council's um, agenda. Jennifer? So this is in part a question to Paul. Um, so let's take McClellan mm -hmm. <laughs> Street. Uh, it comes before this new commission that there's a particular concern for Little McClellan Street. W how would the uh, commission respond to that? Because I know in the past, and I'm going, I think even back to town meeting days, it might have gone... There were requests for parking. It might have gone to the planning board at that point, but the response was, oh, it's just a little street. You know, we're going to wait, you know, we're going to take it up when there, it's a larger issue. So how how would this commission take up such a, a specific street request? I, I think they would pick, take it. I mean, I think previously it was the select board that took on these things and they may have entertained it or not. Um, 
you know, right now it lives with the town council. So if the town council wants to take up McClellan Street, that's within the realm of the town mm -hmm. council. Um, and so I think that what what this is saying is that McClellan, little McClellan Street, <laughs> um, it would go to the TPC. And, and why why should it go to the TPC instead of the council? And I think the reason for it is that, you know, as we learned with the Lincoln Lincoln have um, sort of parking. It's it's very nuancy, and you know you have these. This, this committee actually is is pretty practiced in addressing things, and but you take a lot of advice from the TAC, who has ex, you know T Tracy does a tremendous amount of research on it, and you have other people on the TAC. So I think this would have a a, a, a committee that would be looking at this more from a technical and a policy framework um, instead of, and so I think that that's why it would live there. And I think they'd be, be able to expedite things quicker than a, the council process, which means it goes to the council, gets referred to TSO, TSO asks TAC and DAAC, and it comes back, comes back, comes back. So, but would the, would they take up something that specific or again, Oh yeah, really that's exactly. Scarred from past experience where it's, well, we have to wait to see if there's other streets that need this and not just do one at a time. Well, they, they may not decide it. It's up to the committee that gets appointed to, to decide it. They may say this this rises to a larger issue, but I think the whole point of this is to create a place where a decision will be made one way or the other. Yeah, I don't... Again, my concern is that it may... If, you know, again, this is my concern about there being an advocate, and I suppose account the counselor from the district any district where uh, you know residents may have this concern whether it's um uh henry street you know in district two that the counselor could go before the commission also but my mm -hmm. concern is that it would be it someone with a real it would just get it would it would be determined not to be a high priority if it's very street specific to one street in town I mean, could you see that happening? Are you? Well, I don't see. I think that it, they would be more. I think this this group would be more in tune with making a decision for, as opposed to right now. It's it, it, you'd have to go to the town council, um, and the town council has you know representatives from all the districts um, and the at large members. So, um, so I guess you said. I think what you're saying is you're more comfortable with the current status versus proposing something different. Well, I'm not sure. I just would want to, um, if nobody, you know, again, I really am going back to being scarred from <laughs> previous years, you know, and prior to, I'll just say this prior to your, to your being town manager, but my, to just to put it all on the table, my concern is what had happened in the past. And this is just like the planning board where the town manager previous year, previous to you, would appoint to a board members of a particular position who would vote a certain way. And residents would come before that board, many residents, and offer public comment and express their opinion. And nothing penetrated because the people on the body were not answerable to the residents. And they had been pre-selected to make certain decisions. So that's... You know, so that's a, a concern, not any, just, you know, you're not always going to be the town manager. So mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, just yeah, out sure. that, so that's, that's where it is. Okay. So I'm just wondering what your response to that, you know, how, now maybe if there were one or two counselors on the body that would keep, you know, then the council would select who would be their representatives. I probably feel more comfortable with that, but mm -hmm. You know, so that's a little of my concern, and that may be more planning. You know, something that was particular to a planning board or a ZBA that that may not come up with parking and and traffic as much. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. okay. you know, yeah, and you've raised an issue that has to do with membership of the committee, which is a future item in the list of things we will discuss. Um, Bob. My concern about this is, um, do we, does the council want to relinquish authority over decisions that impact revenues? Um, you know, parking fees um, 
you know, whether there's a meter or not, um, it affects towns, re re you know, the, the town revenues. And I think any, any decision that would impact town finances needs to come, you know, needs to be a recommendation. I'm, I'm okay with the TPC doing the, the you know, doing the work uh, on this, but I think anything that affects finances should be a recommendation to the council. That's all right. Yeah, I'm typing and thinking at the same time, which is never good. Um, these are excellent comments. I, I wanted to say something about my past experience. Uh, Lincoln obviously looms large in that because I was very much involved in it. And my sense was very much that um, counselors as a body um, really don't have, don't really pay a lot of attention to these issues, don't have a lot of experience with them. And their thoughts on it often are arbitrary and somewhat, uh, it, uh, quite frankly, sometimes just completely uh, out there. Um, and I think it has to do with, with having a body that actually spends a lot of time thinking about these things on a regular basis when something like Lincoln or even McClellan, for example, would come before the council. Um, you have a large number of counselors who, you know, just that's not something they spend a lot of time thinking about. They don't have any expertise in the area. And and they sometimes are not very helpful in their uh, comments um, or constructive. At least that was my experience. Um, so I much prefer having at least some of these issues, like, for instance, uh, parking, uh, like on Lincoln or McClellan, brought to a body that actually has some experience and expertise in the area. Um, so um, I'm not as worried, I think, as Jennifer is about not being heard. I think that a body like this, that's what they exist for. I mean, they, you know, this is the kind of thing that they they do. Um, it's not the only thing they do, but it's an important thing. So I think they'd be certainly take it seriously. They take it, uh, you know, um, uh, they, they do their job and they wouldn't be, um, I think, I would hope they would not be capricious or arbitrary. Um, and again, we have the example of the Board of Licensed Commissioners as a model to look to. Um, so I'm less worried about that. Bob raises a good point about finances. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to have to ponder that a lot more. Um, but anything that has an impact on towns, revenues, or finances, um, it might be more appropriate that it be advisory. Um, um, that's another issue with this body. Should it be advisory or should it have? And that's something we still have to discuss. But um, um, is it going to be strictly an advisory body or is it going to be one that has actual authority? And what is being proposed gives it a fair amount of authority. I raised my hand, uh, put it up because I want to slip out of the role of chair to for my comments. One is the question of uh, it was that was just raised about authority, amount of authority, and I think that it doesn't have to be a yes or no that there the, we can give the commission. Or, um, the right to make decisions on some subjects and request that they make recommendations to the council on other subjects so that it, I don't see it as being um, one or the other across the board. I think you can make that decision. The other thing that I wanted to bring up was that uh, when you get to permanent changes and parking requests, it's not just the revenue question, but uh, I know you guys are probably getting sick of me talking about select board days, but uh, when we made some decisions on parking that extended the hours beyond 6 p.m. for some parking um, areas. There was a lot of discussion about this, and it was a significant issue for many individuals in the community, and we heard a lot. And I think it was important as a result that it be made by an elected body um, for that kind of decision. You know, the reason that we were doing it was is to make sure that there was turnover of spaces and that restaurant employees, for example, weren't just um, 
feeding the meter until the time went off and then uh, to leaving their car there for the rest of the evening while they were at their place of work. But um, that there was actually some turnover of spaces so that uh, people who were coming to restaurants as customers would have places uh, near the restaurants. And that was the, you know, the, the thinking that went on. But it was a fairly substantial discussion with a lot of constituent comment. And that um, makes me nervous about turning the, those kinds of decisions over. So I would tend to look to um, parking requests and think about um, whether there are sections that should be uh, retained by the council and the one that strikes me as the strongest based upon that experience that I described is uh, in the central business district. That um, parking decisions regarding uh, the central business district should be retained by the council, um, which does not mean that we wouldn't change for other kind, delegate for other kinds of areas. So I'm now going to take my hand down because I'm going back to the role of chair and calling on Jennifer. I agree with, I just want to say, I, I agree. I would not feel comfortable relinquishing taking um, the decision-making from the council to a commission for this uh, central business district. I did want to ask with the board, but the board of licensed commissioners does make decisions that affect impact finances. Is that Yes, I, yes, they can. They set the fees. Right. So there's a precedent for relinquishing, um, handing responsibility to another body for yes. some revenue matters. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a charter provision, though. Yeah. Good point. But it is still done, uh, George. That's right. No, I'm good. Go ahead. So are there any other comments to make right now? Because we don't, I don't, your goal isn't to necessarily make decisions, right? No, no. it's just to start the discussion, see where there are issues, see where people have concerns. That also in, obviously includes Paul, um, but just to get uh, some sense of uh, where there, and we can come back and, and get into more detail. But yeah. Okay, so I want to move, you want to move to the third set? Paul has his, Paul has his hand up. Paul? Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I do recognize that it's it's challenging to give up authority to to a, an entity that doesn't exist. And I and um I think that that's that's a hard thing to think about because you get elected to for certain responsibilities, but um I think what I'm focused on is really the um, expediting decision making and the making it clear for the public on how things can get done. And so I think that that's those are the two things that you are obviously weighing. And um, so, but, rec but I do recognize that giving up a, a power or, or decision making authority is is a challenge. I guess I do have a question for um, Andy and perhaps also for Jennifer. Um, related to, say, the uh, business of parking in the central business district, would you envision that this would still go to the TPC, but in that particular case, they would only be making a advisory uh, recommendation that the, then it would come to the council and the council would have the final determination? Or would you suggest that it, it doesn't even go to TPC, it goes straight to the council? Jennifer? I would be comfortable with it going to the TPC with a recommendation back to the council. Okay. So yeah, they have, have a role, but but their role in that particular case would be advisory as opposed to um, decision-making. Okay. Yeah, and the, which is why I started my comment uh, when I was making it about authority, um, that the, the, we can have some things that are recommendations to the council and other things that just authority to make the decision period. And the, that is something that can be 
considered as we um, come forward with the recommendation. Anything else on this topic? I'm going to take us to the next one. Which is 3C. Um, here, here. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. 3C, uh, which is long term public way closures. If you could just scroll that up just a bit, Athena. Oh, I'm sorry. She's typing. Good. Let's let her type first. Um, just let me know if this isn't, my notes aren't accurate. <laughs> well, I think uh, this is good, but I think that it's going to, we're going to have to eventually go back through some of these and sort out what is going to be um, advisory and what isn't. I think it's not all of these things would, would fall into the category of advisory. I, I think that where we were with that one that you just typed on was for central business to check. Mm -hmm. Well, we still have Bob's thought about anything that impacts finances, and that's something that we're going to have to sort out as well. Yes. Um, so it's, I'm taking notes as well, but this is appreciated, Athena, that we keep a, some kind of record uh, as well for the group. Um, I can I can add these group. notes to the to the packet. Okay. So that they're available to everybody. Right. Yeah. It, it, Bob's question being whether, if there is a financial impact, should that also Strictly be advisory. Yeah. All right. 3C, uh, how are we doing in time? We have about 15 minutes, give or take. Um, long term public way closures for all closures not subject to 3A and not requests for seasonal sidewalk or road closures in conjunction with expanding sidewalk, cafe, food, and drink, and other retail. The town council currently in consultation with the town engineer. Um, and uh, that is now proposed to go to TPC with authority to review and take action. There's a bit of a problem in the, um, it's a typo, it's a Scrivener's thing, but there's a bit of missing text. But I think the intent is clear from what, uh, what Paul has written, what is there, that this goes to TPC. Um, I just had a comment that um, under 3C1, under the current policy, Authority stays with the town manager, um, but above 2B, it goes to TPC. So it is, I'm not sure whether there's a logic to that, or um, and there may very well be, um, but uh, people's thoughts on this. Jennifer? Um, I just have a question. So what, what would this be? It's not closure subject to 3A, and it's not request for seasonal. So I'm just wondering, what would be an example? of the kind of closure. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, let's think. I mean, if we want to make something a, like a, a plaza that, yeah, you I think the to traffic is, permanently. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think um, it's it's long term, not personal, uh, not permanent. So uh, it wouldn't be like a permanent plaza. It would be. It would be say um, somebody wanted to reserve a street for greater than 14 consecutive or cumulative days, like if the farmers market wanted to close a street. Mm -hmm. for longer mm -hmm. than 14 um, farmers markets. So something so, like that. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so <clears throat> technically what the farmers market used to close was spring street because this, the spring street parking lot is actually a road and they would have to request closing spring street uh, to have their farmers market there when they had it in the parking lot. And they do request spaces that be reserved to them anyway yes even now and it, it's it's road or sidewalk closures so if say the farmers market were entirely in the common they would still apply if they wanted to close the sidewalk or 
add signage or seating or something like that to the road or sidewalk. For instance, on Spring Street. Would that be relegated? <laughs> yeah. Athena, the like, Spring Street for the construction of the Spring Street uh, building, they closed that sidewalk was closed for a long period of time. Would that be something that would fall long term closure of yeah. a sidewalk due to construction? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would be also something that under current policy comes to the town council. Suggestion here is to move it to TPC. Correct. And I'm still trying to understand my note, and I don't know if Paul can understand it better than I can, but um, there seems to be somewhat of a split in um, 3C1 stays with Paul, but um, yeah, maybe I'll have to go back and sort this out. Mm -hmm. But anyway, if he has the time to look at it at some point, and it okay. may be not an issue at all. So it's, um, it's less than um, 180 days in con 3C1 is less than 180 days in conjunction with the sidewalk um, food and drink oh, you the know, food when and the food. when the restaurants close okay. the sidewalk for food and drink but but not for longer than 180 days um, and then 3C2 is for anything else goes to uh, so 3C1 those sidewalk closures for restaurants Okay. Is is town manager for less than 180 days, and then 3C2 is anything else. Okay. Okay. Any thoughts from anyone on this? Do they have concerns about this? In other words, objections or concerns. Okay. Um. Yeah. I guess the only question that I would have, and I don't have an opinion on it yet, when we're expanding sidewalk, cafe, food and drink, and we have some of those like in front of uh, Amherst Coffee, mm -hmm. uh, we're losing parking spaces in the central business district for another, and we're doing it for a reason and another purpose. You know, is this a uh, commission decision or is that a council decision? So, so I think a lot of every almost you could interpret almost everything impacting finances. I think that's a sort of a slippery slope on some of these things. So, if you want to put in a, um, a loading zone, you know, for a business that opens up and they need to have a truck delivery every day, and you want to create a loading zone from eight to twelve in the morning, or you know, we we installed you know short term parking during the during COVID panic, like fifteen minute parking for people to get you know takeout. I just think those types of um, relatively smaller decisions. I um, um, I think you. I'm not sure if the council wants to spend its time on those types of decisions. Mm -hmm. So I I totally trust the town manager with looking out for the town's financial interest mm -hmm. in these matters. <laughs> That's not, so, so, so I'm comfortable with this. I, I can't imagine our current or future town manager, you know, um, hastily making a decision that would not benefit the town financially. Bob? Uh, I would be comfortable with some sort of de minimis financial impact being mm -hmm. um having the tpc having authority for that just you know i i'm more concerned about major like if we change parking fees that's a pretty big impact on on um on uh fi town time revenue so um but i mean you know a load is on here a spot there doesn't doesn't really have such a big impact so i think again i don't know if we could how what we can how we can define what the de minimis amount is, but again, if it's a if it's a small impact, it, I'm I'm not as concerned. Well, let's think that we can think on what that look might look right, like. That, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get back to the uh, question of expanding sidewalk, cafe, mm -hmm. food and drink, and, uh, 
does like the Amherst coffee example that I gave, you're giving up spaces in that's fairly long term. Is that, is that actually now um is it year round? Do those spaces ever go back to parking? They haven't taken them out. They they haven't taken them out yet. No, I think it's year round. It's year round. A lot, lot of time. Yeah. So it's become permanent essentially. Is that a decision that you want to recommend that we um, make a decision of the, the 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 commission, or do you want to make it a decision of the council? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if we want to say if it's more than a certain number of spaces. I mean, I actually do feel comfortable with leaving because I think that town manager would be a good steward of those kinds of financial decisions. I don't know if we want to say if it's more than a certain number of spaces, but, um, you know, I, I don't think it needs to come to the council. You know, do we want to give up? three spaces in front of Amherst Coffee, that I would feel comfortable really, you know, um, passing off to this commission. Councilor Ryan? Besides the the impact, however great or small it may be on the town, these decisions often are very positive financial help to our local businesses. And I don't know how you're gonna, gonna weigh that. We do this not because we like um, taking revenue away from our parkings, but because it helps um, businesses um, in the downtown. So I'm not sure how that can be measured um, or balanced, but um, I wanna note the time. I think 3GI, the next item is huge and probably best to be taken up um, at, a, at the next meeting or at a meeting where we have more time. Uh, it covers a very large area of concerns. The other thing I wanted to mention before we were done, um, and I may share this with the committee uh, if the chair agrees, but I took a look at the North, um, Guilford sent me the link and, and I, maybe you've all had a chance to look at it already, but Northampton has a commission along the lines, Not I, I think it's strictly advisory. I believe they have no, I may be mistaken, but my reading of the website was they are strictly advisory. And we're looking at something which has, uh, I think a little bit more uh, teeth, so to speak. But I would suggest that everyone look at the mm -hmm. Northampton site um, and form their own opinions. I also would think that maybe through the chair, um, or maybe Paul has a suggestion, it would be nice, uh, helpful, I think, for us to talk uh, to uh, someone in Northampton about, and maybe more than one someone, about their experiences, what works, what doesn't. Um, it's a neighboring community, and uh, you know they they offer us a model that that we're somewhat following. So I, I don't know how we want to do that, whether we want to invite somebody to come or whether it would be better for us just to reach out and have conversations and then report back. But I would, I personally would like to hear from one or more of the people involved in that and what their experience is, what works, what doesn't. Um, so there's a question of outreach and how that would be done appropriately. Um, so that's, so yeah. I'm going to see the mayor this afternoon so I can ask her um, if she who would be the appropriate person to represent the city on something like this. And maybe have them come to a TSO meeting and we could talk to them directly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's I would like that, but I don't, I don't know if they would. <laughs> um, I'm going to move it along. Jennifer? You're on mute. You're muted. You're muted. I'm sorry, I would like that too, to meet with the representative from Northampton. I'm sorry, I have a train to catch. So I really have a hard stop. So I'm gonna have to- Yeah, which is why now. we're not gonna go okay. on beyond this. But I'm just topic. gonna tune up. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, Bob? I just wanted to to state, it, it's more for next week's discussion or future discussion, but um, I would like to see more um, specific reference to consultation with DAC the Disabilities Advisory Commission. Uh, I mean, even like with 3, 3GI, uh, the town council actually not by, I don't know if it's required by the charter, but it's it's customary to 
um, to uh, for TSO to engage with the TPC or the T TAC and DAC uh, before making just a recommendation to the council. So I, I would like to make that more formal so that it's not left up to the discretion of the, the particular chair of uh, either TPC or 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 the chair of the of the uh, uh, TSO committee. Um, so just again a thought that mm -hmm. I think it's it's very helpful, but I think it, it ought to be more mandatory than discretionary. Specifically with disability is what you're saying, Bob. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, because if we created the TPC, obviously they have. But 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 this would be yeah. It, I I would just especially with three GI, there ought to be required um, consultation with the D, the DAC. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's it's a discussion for yeah, next. Uh, I think we have a member of the Commission on Disabilities on the on this committee. They, so that's that's how we wanted to funnel that representation that they, they actually have a seat at the table. Okay. We, uh, of course, haven't gotten to membership yet, but yeah. it's a good point. Um, you know, it, it, just to close out where we were with the last one, I'm fine with the idea of uh, defining a number of spaces that could be given up to something like sidewalk cafe um to to the commission that would be an, a good way to handle that um so i'm in, in agreement with the suggestion that was made by another member of the committee so i think that where we are um uh, is uh we said we would come up with a stop when jennifer had to leave and not go on to another topic so uh that we George, thank you to keep us moving along as we have time to continue this discussion because it is so big. We knew it was going to take a number of meetings to get through it. And uh, I had nothing further, uh, nothing that I thought of, didn't think of 48 hours in advance. Does anybody have any requests that the, of the items to take up? And if not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. I second. This motion is made and seconded. Uh, we'll note that uh, Jennifer's left the meeting and but continue. We need to vote. Uh, Bob? Aye. Council Lord? Aye. Council Ryan? Aye. And I'm an I. So the uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. I think we had a pretty productive day.